friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Some Bunny, Jump for Joy, and Crazy Antics. So I've stamped out my images on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And I wanted to show you that I altered one of the images from Crazy Antics. It was the little chips packet and I made it into a seed packet by just erasing the word chips and then writing in seeds or drawing a flower in that space. So I'm gonna jump into my Copic coloring and I'm gonna start with my fox. I'm using YR12, YR14, and YR18 for him. This is my favorite combo for foxes. I'm gonna use the YR18 to lay in some shadow on the back of his head, and then underneath his head on his neck area, on the underside of his arms and around his legs. I also like to put in a little shadow above the muzzle on the nose just to uh, create a little bit of an indent there. And then of course on his tail where that would be cast in shadow by his body. And then I'm going to blend that out with the YR14, making sure to just really scrub over the edge of that YR18 and get that color kind of broken up so there won't be any harsh lines and just drag that color toward the center. And then I'll take the YR12 to fill in any remaining space. And again, just using that little circular scribbling motion to make everything nice and smooth and create that soft, you know, kind of furry look. So I am going to do a second layer off screen just to save some time in the video. And then I'll move on to the white areas. I'm using YR000 and YR00 for that, adding some shading and letting that fade into the white. Then I'm going to move on to some warm grays. I'm using W00, W1, and W3 for the little mouse starting with the W3, since he's facing toward the right-hand side as well. I'm gonna put his shadows on the left, down the back of his body, and a little accentuation on his ankles. I want to leave his little feet um, white for now so that I can give them a little bit of a pink tone. So I blend it out with the W1 and then the W00 for the highlight. Also use the W0 to add some color to his belly and the inside of his ear. And then I'm gonna add a little more of that YR000 and YR00 for his belly and the inside of his ears and his nose. While I have those out, I'll also do the inside of the bunny's ears. And I did go back and add a little bit of the lighter shade to his feet. Then I'm moving on to the owl, and for him I'm using E42, E43, and E44. This is kind of a dull brown. It's more of like a grayish brown. It's got a lot of gray tone in it, so I thought that would be something a little different. I used the E44 on both sides of the body, a little more on the right side because he's facing towards the left but he's kind of also facing front. He's not completely turned like the mouse and the fox are. So I'm giving him a little shading on both sides, but just more on the right-hand side. And then I'll add in E40 and E41 for the face and breast area, using the E41 for my shadows, and then softening that up with the E40 and I will um, fill in the rest of him there with that as well. Because these brown tones have that little bit of gray to it, they're very earthy, so I thought they would be perfect for the dirt. I kept the E44, but added in the E47 and the E49, and I'm shading from the bottom up because the sun would be hitting the top of that dirt the most. And then I'm going to move on to my little bunny. And for him, I'm going to use E50, E51, E53, and E55. 
but I'm actually starting with that E51 as my darkest for the main area of his body. So I'm laying in my shadow with that. And for him, I'm giving him shadows on both sides because he is facing front, but just a little bit more on the right hand side because he is just a little bit curved. Then I'll come in with the E55 and begin to add in some accents. I'm going to give him a brown ear and a few little dots and spots just to give him some personality and kind of mix things up. And then I'll go in with the E53 and soften the edge of that and kind of help that to blend into the rest of his body. Then I'm going to move on to the um, container garden, the raised bed garden there. And I'm using E55, E57, and E59 for that. Adding a little shading with that E59 and also a little wood grain texture. And then I will blend that out with the E57, kind of coming in from both sides and then um, just kind of scribbling it as I get towards the middle. Not really any rhyme or reason there, just trying to create that texture and then fill in everything with the E55. And then to help that look a bit more rustic, I went back to my W1 and just added a few streaks of that over top. For the metal part of the spade, I'm going to use C0, C1, and C3. And I'm putting my shading on the right hand side with that C3 and then blending across the center with the C1 and adding a little C0 for a highlight. And then I'm going to start coloring in some of these seed packets. This is where I wanted to add some splashes of color to my scene. So I'm going to really add some um, bright, fun, springy colors to all of these different little packets. So this first one I used RV21, RV23, and RV25, and I blended from the outside edges towards the center. And then I will take RV29 and color in the petals of the flower that is drawn in the center. And then for the next one, I'm going to take Y11, Y13, Y15, and Y17. I did end up skipping the Y11. I didn't end up needing that one. So I just use those darkest three shades and again put my shadows on the outside edges just to make the, uh, the center of that look a little bit more puffed out. And then I use Y15 for the centers of the two flowers on the other seed packets. I'm going to do the other one with the flower in some aqua tones and I chose BG11, BG13, and BG15 for that one. And then when I get to the flower petals, I'm just going to use the darkest shade, so the BG15. Just using one color each for those flowers because they're so teeny tiny. Then I'm going to take BG10 and I'm going to add a little shading to the center label portion and leave the rest white just so it has a bit of shading on the outside edges. And then I'll use BG10, BG11, and BG13 to color in the watering can. So for the body part of the watering can, I'm just adding my shading on the outside edges, the same as the seed packets to make it look nice and rounded. And then on the stem where the spout is, I'm adding the shading on the underside because the, that would be where the uh, sun wouldn't be able to hit. And then for my final seed packet, I'm going to use YG11, YG13 and YG17. Again, I just wanted a nice pop of a spring color that would look good with the other color choices that I've already picked. And then I'm also going to color in the handle of the spade with these shades. Um, so again, I just put my shading on the underside. Then I'll take RV10 and RV11 and add some rosy cheeks to all of my critters. I'd use the 
RV11 first and do a little oval shape on their cheekbone area. And then I trace around the edges of that with the RV10 to help that soften into the skin tone or fur tone for them. And then I'll trim these out with their matching dies. For my background, I've taken a piece of mermaid cardstock and die cut that with one of the Lawn Fawn stitch rectangle stackables. I also used a piece of cilantro with a simple stitch hillside border and a piece of noble fur with the grassy border. So I'm going to take the cilantro piece and pop that in my Misty. I'm going to stamp my sentiment on that one in some noble fur ink and I'm stamping so thankful that we're friends and that is from the Jump for Joy stamp set. I did stamp that down a couple of times to make sure I had a nice bold impression. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty. For my card base, I'm using a piece of sticky note cardstock from Lawn Fawn that I have scored and folded to a standard A2 size card. So it is five and a half wide by four and a quarter tall. I'm stamping a few more images in some sunflower ink. And the sentiment reads, friends are flowers that never fade, which I think went really well with the scene on the outside. I am going to use some pattern paper from the Spring Fling collection. And I'm going to take these little pink uh, pieces. They have like a tiny little X on them. And I glued them down on either side of the floral piece because my floral piece wasn't big enough for the front of the card. Now I actually ended up um, not needing the top piece. It ended up being too big. So once I grabbed my stitch rectangle stackables, I could see that too much of that pink was going to get cut off. So what I decided to do was just peel off the top one and then I die cut that panel with that die so that the stitching detail would line up the whole way around the card. And then I'll glue that down to my card front with some liquid glue. Now I'm ready to assemble my focal panel. I'm going to take this cilantro piece and add a little bit of glue to the top. And then I will add the um, noble fur grassy border above that. Make sure that those are lined up nice and straight and then I'll glue those two pieces to my mermaid cardstock, which is going to be the sky. And then I'll bring in my images. I'm going to start with the bunny because he's going to be in the back of the scene. I have a few images to layer in front of him, so I wanted to make sure I have him placed first. And then I'll have the container garden in front of him so that he looks like he's standing on the opposite side. And then I'll add my fox. He's going to be coming in from the left. And then I'll have my owl coming in from the right hand side. So my concept for this card was that all of these friends are coming together to create this garden that they will all enjoy together. So I've added my watering can in front of the container garden, and then the little mouse will be sitting in front of that, kind of holding on to it. I'll add the spade into the bunny's hand, and then I'm going to give all these friends their seed packets. So they've all kind of picked out the seeds that they want to plant and they're coming to build this garden together. It's kind of like a community garden and they're gonna grow things that they can all enjoy and share together. So I'll add these little seed packets here and there to kind of um, add these little pops of color to the scene. Um, I decided to do the other flower one in the fox's hand just to create some balance. So there's one of those on each side of the scene. And then the little um, yellow seed packet, I was just trying to figure out the placement for that. I ended up putting that down in front, kind of leaning on that container garden. And then the final little seed packet, I'm going to 
um, add, and I'm going to tuck that one in the back just so it's kind of popping out there and you can see a little bit of it. So I've added some foam tape to the back of that focal panel. I'll peel off those release papers and then add that to my card front. I wanted the bottom of the focal panel to pretty much line up with the top of the pink strip of pattern paper. And then I'm going to grab some crystal stickles, of course, and add a little bit here and there to the seed packets. So just kind of going along the right hand side and adding a tiny touch of glitter. I also added a bit to the handle of the spade and to the watering can. So I'm just squeezing that out and spreading it around with the nozzle so it isn't too thick. And then I will pick that up so you can see all of that sparkle and detail. And I'll give you another peek at the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know I am super excited to start my garden in the coming weeks. If you did like it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked below the video. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.